right, guys, we're back. I'm your boy DeAnthony. I'm my boy Christopher the Conch. I'm my boy Adon over here. What up? And we are Break Room Blitz, baby. Gangster. Yeah. Coming back at you with another review. We just came back from seeing Passengers with Jennifer Lawrence, yeah. Chris Pratt, Michael Sheen, Lawrence Fishburne, and if you just really want to say it, Andy Garcia. Hey, uh, two seconds. <laughs> He's in it. <laughs> two seconds. So, it's a sci-fi love story. They are traveling to another world. They get knocked out of their hyperbolic chamber early from some incident. And now they're just trying to survive and make sure the ship doesn't crash. <laughs> so, Don over here oh, tends me. to think that it was just too convenient. Yeah, everything's a little too convenient. Like... And sometimes I ha I can turn off that switch for watching the movies and just enjoy the movie for what it is, but this one was way too convenient. Uh, there was a lot of plot holes as far as like, okay, this is such a you know grand spaceship, which I appreciate what the spaceship looked like. It was pretty cool. It was awesome. Something yeah. I had Did never you? seen before. Um, but um, you know, it's it's really in futuristic and you know something like. What if they get, like, you know, um, shot up by another interstellar, like, battleship or something in space, you know? Like, they didn't really plan for anything. Something as simple as, like, a, their little pods opening up and the computer not being able to put the person back in the pod. Come on. <laughs> but then I guess the movie would be over, and what's the point? <laughs> They're the only people in the universe, okay? That's it. Are they? Here's, like... What if the Gorgons come and shoot them down? <laughs> hey, you know what? There's no fail safe. It's something as simple as, like, okay, you know, these pods are supposed to be foolproof, you know, fail safe and everything, you know, it never happens. But just in the event that it does, what's the fail safe? They have a rinky dinky bartender or what? See, what Adon has here, he has what I call the Lord of the Rings complex. Because we didn't have to watch all three of the movies. The Eagles could have showed up and said, oh, you didn't take that ring over the hill? I'll take you right now, hold on, five minutes. And then, you know, fly over, drop the ring in, call it a day. Didn't need three movies for that. But but the Eagles don't want it, alright? <laughs> they don't work for you. They're free, you gotta let them fly. <laughs> alright? So, I really enjoyed the story. I'm like, I've said multiple times, I am a fan of love. You know, I got my uh, my love story, I got my intellectual value for sure. Yeah. Because he's a tech, I'm a tech. I mean, I'm not building robots, but... What? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I wish you were both doing the same time after the robots. Oh! <laughs> but I did, you know, appreciate that. You know, I love the acting, the emotions that went into it. Yeah. Uh, you say that they didn't need to have, you know, big stars in it, but I don't think they would have pulled it off without um, it. You know, like, uh, thinking back about this movie, the, the first half of this movie is pretty good. As far as, like, their relationship, Jennifer Lawrence, Christopher Pratt, I... Uh, you know, to see them both in a movie, it, it worked out. Like, they're kind of silly. Like, their uh, relationship in this movie is really good. And they really have, like, this really cool, um, you know, what-if scenario built into this movie. Like, you know, everybody says, you know, what if you were in a stranded island? What, what would you take with you? Or what would you do? You know, that kind of thing. So there, there is that kind of cool scenario in this movie. It makes you yeah. think. It makes you wonder if you would be able to do that if you were in that situation. Yeah, that's definitely, this movie definitely made you ask questions. I, there's definitely some convenience factors that come into play, because you're just like, there's a lot of things that just happen at the right freaking time. Right, yeah. And so, I mean, there is that, but I think uh, one thing, I, I actually, actually fell in love with Jennifer Lawrence in this movie, like literally, I'm like, I really love her. And in most movies, I, I can, I, she's a cool, she's, she's cool. I, I like Jennifer Lawrence. And I typically don't like blondes. Yeah, I'm putting that out there. And in this movie, I'm not a fan of Jennifer Lawrence. I am. I dig her. But she's not like, oh my god. And blondes are eh. But in this movie, I loved the woman. I think it was the passion behind the woman in this movie. And the realistic perspective of the woman in this movie. And just her overall. And Chris Pratt played a great role. I, I, I love them both in this movie. I would this think movie. that... Um, oh, well, from what you just said right now. I think that they're one of my top favorite movie couples. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, any movie I've seen. Yeah. Because oh, the, the thing Chemistry is... Chemistry like, was awesome. Yeah. It, yeah it was really was, and I don't know, the perseverance. You know, like, just what they went through together in that short amount of time. Like, Oh, I loved the way that they, they told the story of how they got together. Mm -hmm. You know, them as a couple, you know, dancing and joking, going on dates and stuff like that. I thought that was yeah. 
really great. Like, like, it, like in real life, like they would be the kind of people I would want to hang out with, you know, oh, yeah. outside right. of work and everything else. It's like, hey, what are you doing? You know, let's let's go out or something. You know, oh, but yeah. it's it, it, they they seem pretty genuine. Like, they, I, I would definitely have a lot of laughs with them. You yeah, know? and you could realistically see them together. Like the the dynamic was just there. Yeah, you know, for me, I so I love sci-fi. I love romance. Mm -hmm. So the combination kind of made it somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a sci-fi movie to where, oh, ship is going to blow up, we got to do something, someone's going to sabotage the, the ship, and we got to stop them. It wasn't just a sci-fi movie. Right. It made it more realistic. It made it just more of just a movie, a life movie. Yeah. Like, two people were on a ship, this is how it would go. Yeah, yeah. well, I think the thing is, the convenient things that you saw were the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the not-so-convenient things as far as how they ended up together. That wasn't convenient at all. No. So that that's what really made it for me was they told the same type of love story most can, but they told it in such a different way that it almost felt like an original piece. Yeah, I would and say it was an original. It, 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 it was pretty great. original, but I mean, like, where they mis-executed it was just, like, the convenience factors that happened, like I said, like, towards that half end uh, of the movie. Would you say it was better than Gravity? Um, it was better than Gravity, yeah. Okay. For, for me, Gravity, you know... As far as cinematography goes, Gravity, yeah, I like that, you know. But um, this one had really good scenes as well. Like, um, I think it, the opening scene, you see the ship come into picture, and all I saw was space, and I was like, whoa, this is pretty cool. And yeah. then there's a couple of parts where they get close to the sun and such, or a star. Um, so, I like, those pieces were really cool to see, you know, and, and the whole thing that they did with um, gravity uh, oh, that gravity bubble of water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as far as the CG factor in this movie, it was pretty, um, it was pretty close to the reality. It was seamless. And I love the uh, bartender. I thought he was <laughs> oh, yeah. a great bartender. I'm, yeah. I'm glad they did, like, a bartender, not, like, just some general guy that runs around cleaning up stuff, but the right. bartender was just so much fun. He's like, you know, hello, sir, how may I help you? Yeah. Would yeah. you like a brand, do you? And I think we had a discussion on, like, what's the difference between a cyborg and an android, and then there he kind of explained yeah, what an android was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so that popped in my head, <laughs> and I think I saw him look over, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, we, you know, he's the android, he's the one on the ship, but he acted like an android, you know? He, he did a really good um, uh, part of that. Yeah, that, uh, that. what's his name, uh, Michael Sheen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He did totally. a really good job. Michael Sheen did a great job. I don't know what else he's in, but I'm, I'm, I want to see what else he's in. I, I thought he did a really good job. In yeah, what, he, he's been in a bunch of role. movies. I know, I know I've seen him just to the top yeah, of my Yeah, definitely seen his face before. Lawrence Fishburne's character, when he comes into the picture, it's like, that's where I have to hit it, like, with the really convenient factor there. Um, but, uh, you know, it was needed for a third party to come in. Um, there, there was a, a slight, you know, um, you know relationship uh, issues. Uh, you know, obviously you have two people stranded on. There was a misunderstanding. You know, <laughs> oh. I don't know. I don't think this was a misunderstanding. <laughs> it was not a misunderstanding. misunderstanding. That was a god done <laughs> so, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I mean, like, you know... You, he put it into perspective, you know, as far as, you know, um, this guy, yeah. he's, you know, the the decisions that he made, what would you do, you know, kind of thing. Right. And, and, and he, he really, you know, put that question out there, like, what would you do given the circumstance? You know? He was like the father. They were like the kids, young kids that, I hate you. And then the father comes along and he's like, grow up. Yeah. <laughs> Thought it was great. Well, yeah. yeah, I know. I think that was the just most intriguing thing. Was the thing is, I was wondering while I was watching that movie, how do you come back from that? There's, there's that, there's that moment of, you can't t turn back from this in this movie. Yeah. And then with the plot twist mixed in with there, it's just like you're thinking like, oh, uh, there, there's no, like it, it's more or less the moment where the guy's like, yep, I'm on the couch tonight. And yeah. I don't think I'm ever getting off the couch. And it's like, damn, man, I wish you can get. That's off why the couch. their performance is so great. Yeah. She needs to be in there because I feel like her. Um, Rested bitch face is like oh it's, it's <laughs> the best it, yeah. it is really good like when when she puts on like these moods and expressions you can tell what she's feeling like oh, yeah. anger and frustration or whatever it is like don't talk to me you know I'm yeah, out of here yeah. and you know there was a part in that scene where she is so angry you know that she like goes over to him in his sleep and just wails on him and I love that you know it's like. It's she she, she wasn't a pushover. Yeah. She wasn't a pushover as far as that relationship goes. So. Yeah, so like, you know, I think that's one that the passion comes in too. Because the thing is, you have to question during that scene: 
Is she doing it because of what happened, or is she doing it because she fell in love with him after what happened, and now she's, like, got a double hit on her? Because she was definitely in love with him. So it's just like, that. That I started thinking about that afterwards. It's like, there's a lot of passion, and, yeah, just all, all I, passion. It's, it's all there. It's all relative to, like, you know, relationships, you know? It's like, uh, person that makes you that angry, it's because you care for them, so anything that they do is going to be, like, you know, pretty pivotal, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I think it's going to have you guys talking afterwards. Yeah. yeah. We talked for like 30 minutes in the parking lot afterwards. Yeah, I think it was like 45. Like, like we were in there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for a long time. Yeah, we should have had the scene with us. <laughs> Man, we really should do live. But it's really going to have you guys thinking because like what would you do? Because it's a pretty messed up situation. and But it's a pretty dire situation as well. So it's like, well, I mean, what do you expect them to do? So, I would definitely say go watch it. I would watch it again for sure. And if I had to rate it, I'm probably going to give it, uh, man, I want to say a 9, man, because I definitely want to see it again. You can say a 9, you just said it. All right, so what would you give it? it? <laughs> I'm actually going to give it a 9.5 for originality. 9.5. Not to right. mention, you know, honestly, I got my hero to villain complex to a hierarchy because in actions done, they were there was some villainy here, but not to mention her her performance as the pissed off woman, yeah, better than I've seen in a long time. Period. Yeah, she did such a, Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, because I just heart here legitimately now. But I mean, <coughs> you know, thinking about it a little bit more, you know, um, I, I I I did give it like, at, you know, going out of the movie a five out of ten. But like, you know, now that I come to think of it like a little bit more closely, I'll give it another point. Give it a six out of ten just for that uh, originality aspect of things. Everything else is a nitpick, and you know, yeah, you know, I, I I can't get out of that scope of things, so I have to give it a six out of ten. You see, for me, when you have one scene, they're pretty much on the ship. It's only two people, and they can make a whole movie of that. That's brilliant to me. Mm -hmm. Like the dialogue, the interactions. If you can make a whole movie where I'm not bored, I gotta give it to you, man. That's a lot of thought to be in this one place. We're not cutting scenes. Mm -hmm. We're not cutting to different locations. It's we're here. Yeah, yeah. So but I, I love it. Someone that knows how to, knows the ship has to wake up. Otherwise, there's no movie. And that's what uh, I was going back to. Like my very first thing is like, how are you going to put like these crew members and no fail safe if anything were to ever happen in a cockpit? Actually, don't you know humans up. are perfect? <laughs> What's wrong with you? And we've yeah. always been perfect. Why wouldn't yeah. we create perfect things? Just create a couple more androids that actually put people back into their pods. <laughs> <laughs> like, lay down, human. <laughs> Go to bed. Good night. night. Yeah. <laughs> that would kind of have been good. I do have some issues with the ship. Like the ship just told everything but what was wrong with it. It was like it was insecure. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to tell you what the real issue is. It was like, don't look at my face. It was like, yeah. let me put some makeup on. And so that was my only issue with the whole ship. But I, I don't know. It was something about that movie and their relationship and maybe where I am right now in my life that I just enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, the only other thing too that I really liked about it is like looking at it as a love story, a legitimate love story. Um, it had a lot of the great elements. It had the, the comedic humor. It had the, the you know the doghouse moment. It had the return of faith and love because you kind of re you end up realizing she mm -hmm. ends up realizing they both end up realizing how much they really need each other and how much he actually did her a favor because her life was bland. You know he in, he introduced a actual life to her right and and just I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of and then the, the whole convenience factor. I took that under the the, the slide of. You know how people always say when you're in a relationship and it's all like, oh my gosh, it's all... They say everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. I, I put that under that category. All right, guys, so that is our review on Passengers. I really liked it. We really liked it. Mm -hmm. But this is why we have a trio. I so wanted that, to really like it. But. <laughs> so we can get that dynamic. But, hey, you know, so maybe you guys gravitate more towards... The oh, I forgot Andy Garcia's character. Uh, he oh, had no we should, lines. We should talk about him for two <laughs> seconds because that's about as much as he was in the movie for. That's it. <clears throat> Andy Garcia, everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you agree with us. Uh, let us know. Um, so comment, guys. We want to know. Question of the day. Would you be able to pick up all your shit? <laughs> your life, your family, your baggage, anything you got, just go ahead and drop that. Go to a whole new planet. 150 years from now and live a whole new life. But you're on a different planet, you get to start over, no felonies, <laughs> no, no bad girlfriends, <laughs> you. Fresh start. You might still have those STDs, but 
<laughs> you know what I mean. It's the future. <laughs> I, <I'm> horrible. <laughs> <laughs> would you be able to do it? Because I don't think that we would, but would you? Let us know, guys. All right. I'm DeAnthony. Conch. Avan. And we're Break Room Blitz. Like, subscribe, and definitely comment. We want to know what you guys think. Would you be able to do it? And share. Share with your friends. Share with your family. Because we're so awesome, right? Sharing is caring. Right? All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Peace. Peace. Happy New Year. Just came back from seeing passengers. You're all passengers on this ride. <laughs> Bad joke. Sorry. <laughs>